Welcome to 805 Focus. I'm Dr. Cinder Sinclair with Nonprofit Connect, and we will be bringing you the latest on your favorite nonprofits. So get ready to be inspired. Our special guest today is Palmer Jackson Jr. And Palmer is the chairman of the board of directors for the Granada Theater. Welcome, Palmer. Thank you. Nice to be here. Oh gosh, I'm so looking forward to hear everything you have to say about the Granada because right. You folks are so important. You've been here for so long and you touch the lives of so many people. Yep. So please tell us what's going on at the Granada. Yeah. Well, it, I'll say, uh, first off, it's nice to be back after COVID. We were shut yes. for 16 months. So 16 months you were shut. 16 months we were closed. Um, so that was a big challenge, obviously. But yeah. we got through that. And uh, what we're just noticing now is um, we had 4,000 people come through the theater last weekend. Wait, last yeah, weekend? Last weekend, the, the Book of Mormon show had a total of 4,000 people over the course of three shows. So. I've, I've heard people talking about that show. Yeah. I wanted to see yeah. it. I was not in town, otherwise I would have. Yeah, that was a great show. Um, you know, we hold 1,500 people, 1,500 seats, so that's almost each one being sold out. So that's a great... So it just feels like we're back, you know, audiences are back. You don't have to worry about masks anymore. Yeah. Vaccination cards and all that kind of stuff. Oh, so golly. so we're, we're pretty excited. In fact, I think this year we're tallying up the numbers. This year might be now 2022-23, um, our biggest year for audiences ever. Really? Yeah. 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 Wow. So, so you were shut down 16 months. Yes. Now you're back in the saddle. Yeah. That first year after we reopened was still a little slow. Uh -huh. You know, people were hesitant to come sure, back. Sure, of course. And we had, uh, for example, we had no shows. You know, when people buy tickets and then they just last minute, oh, I don't, I don't feel well, I don't want to go, whatever. Yeah. But it's starting uh, in, in the fall of this past year, um, it's it's game on. So everyone's back. Gosh, so congratulations! Yeah, yeah. So, so the one thing to mention is, you know, we our mission is to support our eight resident companies. That's, Eight resident companies. Yeah. So that that st starts with I would say the Santa Barbara Symphony. Okay. You know, um, Opera Santa Barbara. Okay. Uh, very important. Also, State Street Ballet. Oh. World class ballet that's here. CAMA. So that's Community Arts Music Association. They bring incredible world class symphonies to Santa Barbara. We have the Santa Barbara Choral Society. We have Music Academy of the West, mm. which is doing more stuff with us now oh. uh, during the summer than they used to. Um, and then we also have UCSB Arts and Lectures, oh. which is actually our biggest renter. They do the most shows in the hall, so we love oh. that. And um, also American Theater Guild, which is uh, not a local organization, but they're the ones who bring us our Broadway shows. Oh. so. So it's a great mix. Now we also take uh, outside rentals. You know, we just had the economic forecast uh, oh, yesterday. Oh yes, yes. Uh, we do weddings. Um, weddings? Yeah, yeah. I didn't weddings. know that. I know. It's a nice place for a wedding. Uh, we had a kind of a some rock and roll star had a wedding uh, a couple <laughs> months ago. I can't remember the name of uh, the guy, but um, so yeah. And then we have out, outside promoters uh, bring concerts to us as well that are that are separate. So um, there's a lot going on. Wow. So eight resident companies, and they all have their schedules, and I bet it's quite the juggling act to keep all those schedules it, straight. It is. It's one of our challenges is that the, these organizations book their shows years in advance. Oh, really? So our calendar gets booked up, you know, a couple of years in advance with the symphony and CAMA, who, who brings, you know, like the L.A. Phil uh, to us. They have to do that far in advance. So that's a little bit of a challenge for us sometimes. Our calendar is booked ahead of time so people when people want dates sometimes we're like oh we're really sorry that's two years away and it's booked oh gosh you know but again we serve the resident companies first that was michael tobes and the founders of the restoration of the theater that's uh, what they wanted is, yeah let's take care of the local organizations first right I mean, that makes sense yeah yeah and we uh, one other thing on that we give um nonprofits a special rate Oh, uh, to to rent the theater. We're a nonprofit as well, of course. Uh, but we give them a special rate, and um, we uh, specifically for our resident companies, they get an even better rate. Oh, a special rate because they're our resident companies. So, and we also help them with a lot of things. Oh, you know, financially, and uh, we help market 
their shows. We, we host uh, a, a type of software that, that helps our resident companies sell tickets and, and manage the ticket sales. So those are some of the things that we do. That's important. I bet they're really grateful for that. That yes. can be yeah. pretty intense. Yeah, and we, we provide our ticketing service not only to our resident companies, but also to uh, the Libero Theater, for example, uses mm -hmm. our, our ticketing service. So, oh. so you're getting a, a feel for the different things that we do. So give me an example of how a nonprofit might rent your place for. Th just, they would just call and ask but I mean, what would, Give me an example of what, they, what a nonprofit has used the Granada for in the past. It, it's always some sort of show. Okay. You know, uh, for example, the Grace Fisher Foundation. Uh -huh, yes, yes. If you're familiar with yep, them at all, um, they've got basically an annual show with us now at Christmas time, an amazing uh, variety show that they put on. And, you know, we help, we essentially co-produce that show. Um, so it's, it's, it's a big job. Um, in, in other words, we help them more than we would help a show that's already complete and uh -huh, done sure. with a whole company. You know, they're a pretty small organization. So. So we've got a, a you know a real crack team uh, production. Team it sounds like it has seen everything. You know we have a huge you know stage and lights and a uh, recently uh, renovated sound system that we put in. Yes, yes. It is. A, I don't know if you've heard about that. Yes, at all, I did a little bit. Yeah. Super. Uh, <laughs> as an audiophile, um, it's really fun for me because it sounds really good. So, <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's great. Well, so if someone's. Uh, watching this and wanting to reserve yeah. <clears throat> the Granada, they ought to do it right away and not be disappointed when they're told, sorry, we're two years yeah. out. We still, have, we still have lots of openings in the calendar, especially okay. you know, weeknights are easier oh. to get. Um, so I, I think the total number of performances we had last year was something around <clears throat> 70. But for some of those, um, for example, the opera, they uh, reserve the theater for 10 days. Because of rehearsals oh, oh, and of set course. design and all yes, this kind yes. of stuff. So when opera comes in, and they'll be coming in this coming year, we're excited. Um, th it's a big deal for us because they, it's great for us because they, they rent the theater for quite a few days. Um, and so there's rehearsal days, which are a little bit lower rate, and then there's performance days. Ah. Um, and so that's one example. The symphony, for example, just comes in. They're, they're pretty quick. You know, uh -huh. They maybe have one rehearsal, and then oh. they're ready to go. And I know downstairs you have all these rooms for changing and you've got yes. costumes and you've got all kinds of things yes, going on Yes, it's a down great, there. that was one of the big things of the restoration um, that finished in 2008 uh, was really redesigning and fixing up the dressing rooms and all that backstage stuff. So we have a fun story that um, it, it's a fairly common uh, experience for when someone comes back to the Granada and hasn't been there for a while, we see the performer walk out on stage and they walk out on the stage and they look at the hall and they go, oh yeah, this place. I remember this place, you know, because they just love it. They love yes, the performance. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Now, the Granada, the building was first built in 1924. 1924, and it was built, there's a funny story about it, it's on our website. The guy who built it had never built a high-rise before, and it withstood the earthquake of 1925. So he did oh, a good job. Oh my gosh! Yeah, yeah, pretty surprising. Um, he he basically had a book, and learned <laughs> from the book how to make the building, and that, oh. that's it. <laughs> so so we're having our. Um, Centennial uh, next spring. Uh, okay. Years, All you know. right. The Libero Theater just celebrated their 150th, which is yes, awesome. yes, yes. We can't quite match that, but 100 years is pretty good. I'd say it's pretty good. Yeah. Golly. Okay, so let's talk about some of your favorite shows. Yeah, sure. Um, and and the one coming up. You've got one yes, coming up. Yes. Yes. Would love to talk about that. There are so many great shows and so many different types of shows. One that was pretty special for me as a guitar player was we had uh, Joe Bonamassa mm -hmm. you know, a few months ago. And uh, he's a, a legendary uh, blues guitar player, you know, completely sold out the hall. So that was great to get. Really? You um, sold out the hall? Yeah, which, which is nice. You know, you know, he's a big enough act that he would play at the Bowl, for example, which holds 4,000 people and we only hold 1,500. So that was a coup for us to, to get him to play uh, at our hall. Um, 
gosh, the Book of Mormon we just had, which was super popular. Yeah. And that was sold out. And that was essentially sold out. Yes. Yeah. Um, you know, all the symphony shows are fantastic. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know when the last time you heard the Santa Barbara Symphony was. Yes, yes. I mean, they are, they are at a level now that they've never been. I mean, it is just the quality of the musicians that they have it, and near the conductor. I mean, yes. They are, oh, isn't he amazing? He's incredible. Um, so any of, any of those shows are always top notch. Um, and we have the LA Phil coming uh -huh. soon as well. Yes. That's through uh, CAMA, Community Arts Music Association, which by the way is the oldest nonprofit in Santa Barbara. I didn't know Did that. Did you know that? Yeah. The, on, the next one after that is the Natural History Museum. Oh. Uh, but CAMA was the one, uh, Community Arts Music Association, they were the ones who built the Libero Theater as, as volunteers and really? kind of got that together, you know, 150 years ago. So. Um, one of the things you were asking about, I think, is that uh, my midlife crisis rock band, <laughs> which you've seen, and I've seen you dancing yes, to us. Yes, yes. Thank you. It's a great um, band, a wonderful thank band. You. you guys. So we have, uh, over the last four years, started doing uh, kind of these project shows. So we did Neil Young at the Libero. We did uh, Crosby, Stills, and Nash, and then we did the Allman Brothers uh, as well. Uh -huh. um, so this year we're taking our game up a little bit, and uh, we're partnering with the Santa Barbara Symphony um, to play the music of Van Morrison yeah. at the Granada. Um, and all that information is on our website. You can go find about tickets and VIP experiences and all sorts of stuff like that. That's so. going to be something. So, yeah. so a rock band with the yes. symphony. Yes. Yeah. A, a playing Van Morrison songs. Yes. That yeah. is a, you don't want to miss it. I think it's going to be good. <laughs> Whose idea was that? You know, it was a combination. Um, Nier uh, came to me. Uh, I'm on the board of the symphony. And, oh, and, okay, okay. And the symphony is looking for interesting new things to do. You know, good I mean, for what them. they're doing is great, but yeah. they want to branch out into uh -huh. uh, new audiences and popular music when yeah. they can. And so Nier said, I'm not going to get his accent right, but he's such a great guy. He says, Bummer. I would like to play a symphony with your band. <laughs> <laughs> a concert with your band. And so I said, well, that, that sounds like, well, how would that, how would that work? You know, what, what does that mean? And so we started talking about it, and we, we were t thinking about who would be the next artist that we might focus on for a whole show. And we already play a bunch of Van Morrison songs. Oh, you are? Yes, yes, you do. Yeah, and it's such great music, and the, the, the symph symphony seems to fit with it pretty well, I think. Uh -huh. um, a lot of that music is, some of the ballads are, you know, mm -hmm. very, um, would fit well with, with strings and horns and all that kind of stuff. So we're looking forward to that. And um, so it's about six months away. We've, we've, of course, started rehearsing. Of course. But here's, a lot of my friends are saying, well, how, how does this work? How, do, how can you even know how to do that? Yeah. Um, and the short answer is we have, I have a friend who is a arranger and conductor himself, and he will be writing all of the charts for the symphony for this show. And then he will be our coach. So oh, he will gosh. be, we're, we're getting together with him in, in about a month. And he will say, here's how you guys need to do this. Nope, stop, redo that part. You know, okay. And then he writes the charts for the symphony, gives them to the symphony. We only get one rehearsal with the symphony. Friday night, the night before the show, because they are so pro oh. that they arrive ready to go. So, oh my gosh. So we're a little nervous because you know, yeah, that yeah. means we better be ready, right? So, yeah. so we get one rehearsal with the symphony, uh, but lots of rehearsals with this uh, arranger, conductor, guy. So we'll, we'll be ready. What a blessing to have that guy as a friend. It's the only way that it could work. Yeah. You know, I, I couldn't write the charts and tell Nier what to do. <laughs> no. <laughs> so. so what did your band members, members say when you, when they you were, told them, hey, guess what, guys, we're going to be yeah, playing with the symphony? They were excited. Um, they were? Oh, yeah, good. Yeah. It, it's, it's very, uh, it's just beautiful music. I mean, now the singing, the singing is, is going to be part of the challenge. Uh, our lead singer, John Simpson, who's a great, great singer, and you've heard yeah, him many yeah, times. Yeah, he is you know, great. He can do so many different voices and do them well, mm. and so he will be singing most of the songs. I will be singing a few. Oh, boy. Well. Yeah, and Robert, our bass player, will sing one, and our drummer will sing a couple, and so we'll spread it around, but John is going to have to carry the load because he's just got the pipes. Gosh. Yeah. Did you ever think when you were forming the Double Wide Kings <laughs> That you'd be playing with the symphony. No, 
no, no. It's it's exciting. So you know, it's a a lot. Of, it's a big project. So a lot of work to do. Eighteen songs will probably be, be playing. Eighteen. And so that's a you know two hour show, um, intermission. You know, but we have a little bit of a track record of doing this now, and we kind of feel like we can we can do it. So, we'll I know you can do it. It's yeah. going to be fabulous. One of the fun places I saw you, speaking of the Granada, was during when we were closed, as you know, uh -huh. we were racking our brains to try to think, how can we do something for the community when, yeah. we, when the hall is closed? So we had Roar and Pour. Oh, yes, Roar and Pour. Which were the concerts right on State Street, right outside um, our entrance. And uh -huh. we partnered with Opera Santa Barbara. Uh -huh. um, Costis basically was his idea. He said, Palmer, you've got to you got to do something, uh, let me help you with this. So we had ba almost every week, um, Thursday nights yes, we had Yes, it band. was, every Thursday. Yeah. And uh, also the Good Lion Cocktail Bar right there. So yes, that's what yes. kind of roar and, thinking. and pour. Yeah. Uh, they were great because they, they had tables outside. And so and you probably saw some of those. I mean, we had Spencer the Gardener Yes, there. yes. We had my band, we had uh, the Academy, we had uh, Area 51. Yep, yep. Um, and a couple of the, the videos, it looked like New Orleans or something. There were so many people out there yeah, yeah. dancing. So we felt good about helping to make that happen. The Granada staff were the ones who did the sound system, set it all up, and managed it. So that was that was a good, that was one of the few good things you know, oh, during that the, time period. Yeah. yeah, yeah, from the pandemic. That was so creative for you guys to do yeah. that. Well, fine, we'll just go outside. And we'll just play outside. People can dance in the street. Yes. And they, we were there every Thursday I, I think night. I saw you every time. You and Dennis <laughs> out there dancing. It's, it was good to see. Yeah, that was that was quite something. So, the Granada just happens to be a five hundred one c three. Yes. And so I bet a person can go on the website. Yes. And make a financial donation that yes. is tax deductible. Yes. Yes. We have. Um, uh, there's a page on the website for you to click on, or you can give us a call, or come tour the theater. We love giving theater tours. Oh, yeah. If you're interested, come come and and see the the backstage and oh, that's you know good. all the dressing rooms. And there's a rehearsal room down there. Where there's a dance room. I mean, a lot of stuff that you wouldn't see unless you did a tour with yeah. us. So we love to do that. So on the website, there's a place to you can just a contact tour. us. Oh, just or, give or, you a call. Yeah, or just call, call us, and you know, especially if you're interested in making a contribution. You know. Yeah, of course, <laughs> yeah. that'd be nice. But we do have a really loyal uh, group of, of donors. You know, we have a fantastic board of directors, uh, fourteen on the board, who are all super committed. Um, yes. We have our annual Legends Gala. I feel like you've probably come yes, to that yes, before. Yes, yes, uh huh. Um, and this year we are, last year we honored my parents as the yes, philanthropist yes. Uh, legend. And then we honored Alan Sides, who the artist legend who built our new sound system mm -hmm. um, for us. And then, uh, okay, now I have to remember which was the nonprofit that we honored last year. Oh, uh, uh, yeah. Who I was it I last year? Because we've, we've done it six times now, uh -huh. so I always get a little, oh, State Street Ballet. Oh, that's right, yeah. that's right. Yeah, it was that State was for Street us Ballet. last year. So. This year, um, in our event in the fall, we're honoring um, Brooks and Kate Firestone. Oh, that's great. As our philanthropic Perfect. legends. We are honoring, um, a little bit out of the box this time, not, not one of our resident companies, but Ensemble Theater Company oh, nice. at the New Vic. So they're our institutional Good. honoree. Uh -huh. um, and uh, let's see, oh, and our, our artist is uh, Fanny Flagg. Oh, gosh. That's going to be great. So that's going to be a good a good party, and when we raise a bunch, we usually raise you know between three hundred and five hundred thousand at that. Good. That's a well, big I'm going to go on your website and find out when that's happening and yes, get me a that ticket. That would be great. Palmer, what wonderful work! Mm -hmm. We are so in this community grateful mm -hmm. for all the work that goes on at the Granada for our benefit. Yep. And so please tell your board of directors thank you so much, and I thank will. you for being on our show today. Yeah, it's our pleasure. Thank and you. Thank you for joining us on 805 Focus, and we'll see you next time.